Hi, I'm Ludic Ryan. Today I'd like to talk about the Nidhogg games and how they foreground the importance of space. Fighting games are dominated by either hit point bars or damage totals which are visually represented at either the top or bottom of the screen. Nidhogg approaches this idea differently. The stage is the hit point bar and the players are competing in a tug of war across it. By embedding the very concept of the hit point bar within the game world and the objective itself, Nidhogg distills one of the fundamental elements of fighting games, the mastery of space, into every aspect of its system. We'll explore how it does this by first looking at traditional fighting games like Street Fighter and Smash. From this we can identify many indie games who make the genre more accessible by making one button fighters which simplify the mechanics. Finally, we can then show how Nidhogg frames special mastery within its game system by appropriating the hit point bar. The hit point bar is a staple of fighting games. Players must land hits on their opponent to deplete their bar to zero. To do this, players have a range of attacks at their disposal which can vary from game to game. The notable exception to this is the Smash series of games in which the player must knock their opponent off the stage and any damage they accrue increases their velocity when hit. Smash uses stocks, which are the amount of lives a player has. When a player runs out of stocks, they've lost the game. But the thread which connects Smash and fighting games like Street Fighter, King of Fighters and Absolver are the large variety of attacks and the spatio-temporal considerations which govern their appropriate usage. By this I mean that within fighting games, timing, considerations of distance and psychological outmanoeuvring are crucial when playing. In his book From Masher to Master, Patrick Miller outlines the possible complexity arising from these considerations by analysing a couple of moves from Ryu's moveset in Street Fighter. This complexity deepens when more characters are added and with different startup times, recovery and hitboxes on their attacks. This complexity allows for a range of attacks, counters and combos to take place throughout a round, with both players potentially taking damage. Rounds have a to and fro, where each player may chip away at the hit point bar of their opponent. This hit point bar is the symbol at which all movement in the fighting game is directed towards. However, this structure is subverted by indie fighting games who eschew the traditional hit point bar and so the experience of the fighting game itself is altered. Indie fighting games strip away the complexity of the fighting game genre by having one button as the attack input. Instead of having between 30 and 40 attacks to choose from, there are between 1 and 5 possible attacks, depending on if the character can even jump. This removes the complexity surrounding hitboxes, counters and combos where there is a high mechanical threshold to playing. One button fighters also implement a one hit one kill rule on player avatars. For instance, in Samurai Gun, if a player is hit by an opponent, they die and respawn elsewhere in the map. This all results in one button fighters adapting a form of the neutral game which Patrick Miller defines as the point at which players are looking for momentum advantage against an opponent and they put those opponents in disadvantageous tactical positions. Whereas the neutral game in traditional fighters can end with one player taking some damage and being in a specially disadvantageous position, they can counter and work their way out of the situation. One button fighters don't have the safety net of being able to counter a combo or block a hit. Their neutral game contains tension because there's a finality in the death of their character, a quantitative measure of their opponent's march to victory. It's distilled into a few moments of special positioning and psychological outmanoeuvring like traditional fighters, but it's more accessible because the complexity behind hitbox calculation and startup times for attacks is greatly reduced. The result of these one button fighters is that there's no need for a hit point bar, outside of dive kick's loving parody of course. Considering both the traditional fighting game and the indie fighter, this is what makes the entire structure of Nidhogg interesting. Nidhogg contains the inherent play structure of other indie fighters, one button combat and a one hit one kill format. However, it integrates the hit point bar of traditional fighters in an interesting way. Nidhogg operates as a reverse tug of war game. Once players take out their opponent, they must make their way to the other side of the level, which is where their ultimate objective lies, to be eaten by the Nidhogg. Upon being eaten, the player wins. Each level stretches out on several different screens on the x-axis, allowing each player to run towards their destination. The objective of running to the other side of the screen and the horizontal level design combines to represent the hit point bar from traditional fighting games. The position of the players in the level shows who is in the ascendancy and who has the right of way to continue running towards the Nidhogg. Movement in the game is then directed towards the fulfilment of this objective and doesn't necessarily have to be directed towards eliminating the opponent. As long as the player moves past their opponent, they can continue running and advancing on the objective. Its neutral game is directed towards who has the right to move and is loaded with special tactical play like fake dive kicks, 
rolling under the opponent's weapon and distracting throws. This type of neutral game is one that builds from both the tactical possibilities of traditional fighters and the indie fighting game format. Whether you love the old art style of Nidhogg 1 or the added variety in Nidhogg 2, the game dances upon a fighting game staple and specialises that which is meant to keep track of a player's state of existence in the game. Nidhogg makes a game out of the hit point bar. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to watch last week's video on how Tacoma specially evolves the audio diary, then click on the link in the video. Next week I'll be talking about Cuphead and the genealogy of the boss battle game, so if you'd like to be notified when that video releases, then click on the subscribe button.